Hello, welcome after a lunch break. I hope you are enjoying uh, Expo. My name is uh, Michal Malec and today I'm going to present you serverless API with AWS Lambda. Let's start this presentation with a few questions. Who of you have ever heard about serverless? Please raise your hand. Yeah, so there are some people here. Who of you was using Lambda, actually using? Please raise your hand. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, here is an agenda of our presentation, and firstly, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Entitlement Server team member who is quite significantly involved in topics connected with AWS. Our project is one of the first in IDEMIA fully developed for AWS. However, it is not much different from other ones. Actually, uh, we are using new version of uh, our stack 2.1 called CloudStack, about which you probably heard uh, this morning. Uh, today, I would like to talk about something which is much different. This presentation is going to be an introduction to serverless world. However, it is only an introduction, so there will be no deep dive uh, during this presentation. Before serverless, uh, I will just quickly introduce AWS. So everything started in 2006, and it was a revolutionary idea that IT infrastructure can be available as web services. Thanks to this solution, everybody was able to spin his own servers and deploy application in minutes. So you can just uh, start your server everywhere in the world, upload your code and, and start it. A very accessible financial model without upfront payment made AWS really popular. Currently, AWS Cloud consists of 69 availability zones within 22 geographic regions around the world. Each availability zone is a separate data center. Each region is a geographic area consisting of availability zones, and there are three more uh, regions already announced. Thanks to this solution, you can deploy your application in almost every place in the world. So, you are where your customer need it. For example, in United States or in Europe or in Asia. All right. Before that, uh, sorry, but uh, on AWS, everything is connected to services. So we have services which are strictly serverless and those are on the right, for example, DynamoDB, this is a service for storage, or Lambda, uh, about which I'm going to talk later on. We have also API gateways, and there are services, uh, this on the left, which are more server. For example, EC2, so this is basically servers, or RDS, and this is uh, the server uh, service for, uh, for database. I will now jump to serverless. But actually, before that, let's quickly discuss what we are using now in, in our classic approach. Our applications are deployed mostly with very well-known tools like containers, so Docker or Kubernetes, or, and then we are using, uh, for example, Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring. And everything is running on servers. These like physical ones, in-house servers, or some cloud servers, as we have this new brand, CloudStack. But what exactly are cloud servers? So just another computer somewhere else in, in somebody's uh, data center. So the question is, if it is easy to manage, if it is easy to manage servers, in, uh, in-house servers require a lot of maintenance, like cooling, like uh, electricity, like providing internet connectivity. So that's why companies start using cloud servers. And that's a great idea, actually. And what you are seeing now is AWS shared responsibility model, according to which uh, you just see 
what is AWS, so cloud provider responsibility, and what is customer responsibility. So if we are using uh, cloud servers, we don't have to manage the, the hardware or infrastructure, but we still have a lot to manage, like our application, like our operating system, or like our data, which still have to be encrypted. In serverless approach, you just write your own code. Just write your code, and then, uh, then AWS, for example, on any other cloud provider, will run this code on one of the randomly chosen servers. So then your work ends. Just write your code and say that it should be executed on one of the servers. And thanks to this solution, uh, the infrastructure costs decrease, decrease very much, actually. So, yes, there are still servers, but the most benefit is that you don't have to manage them. There is no patching, for example, no pre-provisioning and no guess, uh, guessing in, in terms of uh, our infrastructure, in terms of the servers which we have to pre-provision. As I said before, you just concentrate on your code, on your application, which executes cheaper, and your application is still very highly available. So let's now talk about Lambda. Lambda is AWS service to execute code in serverless manner. The idea is that you split your application into smaller functions. And these smaller functions will be executed on, as I said, random servers as a response to, to event. This event may be, for example, HTTP request or uh, new data upload to storage or actually many, many more. Functions can be written in, in your favorite technologies like Java, like Go, like Python, or, or even Scala. It is always highly available, of course, as everything in AWS and scalable, yeah, like everything in AWS. So the AWS just chooses the server and, and, and run your code. As you pay only for the execution time, which in this solution is highly minimalized, the overall costs are reduced tremendously. It's also a, a huge motivation to write functions which execute uh, very, very fast. What's more great is that 1 million of requests and 2.3 million of seconds of compute time is always free every month. So think about it, that you can execute your application a million of times a month for free. It's completely free, every month. There are many use cases for, for Lambda. The best ones are web application and mobile application, where Lambda acts as backends. However, it is also great in IoT scenarios, when you have a lot of devices sending constantly data, which should be, for example, analyzed and stored then in another place. It is also great for just simple data processing or, for example, ETL processes. As usual, there are also some disadvantages. The, the first one is that you cannot execute your function for more than 15 minutes. So that's the, the limit. If your function should be executed more than 15 minutes, you should use other technology. Or split your application to, to, to smaller functions. That's, the, uh, of course, another solution. Lambda is also not always the best solution. You should think about your application, just analyze what Lambda gives you, and then decide if it suits you. Because uh, sometimes you need access to underlying resources, to, to server due to some, for example, licensing issues, or, or you have some specific requirements, or you have to keep your state in application. And in this, all, all, all these scenarios, you should uh, use something else. Lambda is also relatively new, actually five years old now, and it is yet no, no really well known. So there, there is a problem with things like debugging, for example, which is very important, or sometimes it might be difficult uh, to find some 
uh, examples uh, in internet. So that's the, the, the next uh, disadvantage, unfortunately. There is also an issue called cold start, that if your function is not running for some time, then it needs more time to, to start. Okay, so let's now talk about API, which is required to execute our Lambda function. To create API, we can use API Gateway, which is next serverless fully managed servings, thanks to which you can create API with only a few clicks. That's really, really easy. Or you can even generate your API using open API specification. Requests received by API may be then passed on proxy to your Lambda function or even your on-premise application or your server application, if you have such. As usual, it is highly available and scalable as everything in AWS, and you only pay for API calls. So if you don't have API calls, there is no payment for this. This is free in this, uh, this scenario. So you pay only for the amount of used resources and transferred data. So there are more great features of API Gateway, like caching, which may be enabled to provide your responses faster. There is also a possibility to, lo to use the content del delivery network. So you can spread your API for, uh, all over, uh, to many places all over the world. You can easily configure API Gateway to use uh, DDoS protection or throttling or web application firewall. It is, in most of the cases, just ticking the, the, the checkbox to enable this feature and sometimes, of course, paying more money. Yeah, this is as usual in AWS. So you might also uh, deploy your application as uh, your API as different environments. You may have one environment for development with every answer, uh, every response is mocked, or you may have also the second environment for staging and production with real responses from Lambda or your, your server backends. API Gateway is a product ready to be used. It has a lot of features, but number of these features is also limited. And if you need something more, there will be a huge problem to, to add anything. For instance, there is no mutual TLS authentication possibility, which was a, a problem in, in our project. Uh, it is also a very specific product, so if you decide to, to use it, then it may find it difficult to move to other cloud provider or just move your application to your on-premise servers if you need it. So let me now introduce you Sam. Sam the Squirrel is named after AWS serverless application model, a model for defining the resources used in serverless application. Sam left a cozy light in a tree to help AWS uh, users build their serverless application effectively and more easily. Today we are going to get to know with Sam and then use it to deploy our first serverless application. Sam is basically a way to, um, to define your resources, to define your functions, to define your APIs in a consistent model using one template. It can be YAML template or JSON template. It consists also uh, of a command line interface which helps you to deploy your function and uh, start your infrastructure. As everything is described in a single file, uh, which may be versioned like uh, our code in Bitbucket, it can go also uh, through the same processes like pull requests. It is easy to manage and everybody may have access to it and perform changes which effectively change the infrastructure. Some also enable you to locally execute your Lambda function and debug your code. So here you can see uh, the example template uh, 
in in the arm of uh, in in the arm made in SAML, and the most important part here are resources. In the resources section, there is uh, one function defined called uh, hello world function. So we see um, that the type of this resource is, is just lambda function. Then we need to define where this function is located on our local computer. Uh, the handler is just uh, the function, just we can say it's like main in Java. The, the first function which should run, then we have runtime, and then we are defining events, uh, events which will trigger this uh, our function, our code to, to execute. And this in this example, this is API call to uh, hello endpoint with just a get method. So it is pretty pretty easy to to, to uh, write this template. Okay, so now it's going to be a demo time. And let's now talk about uh, what I'm going to do in this demo and what is our task. So our task is just to deploy very, very easy serverless API with only two endpoints. There will be a get endpoint uh, to, to, to user path, which will fetch users from uh, DynamoDB table. And the second thing will be the uh, post request, which will just upload new user to this Dynamo. DB table. It looks like this. So let me now, uh, firstly, maybe talk a bit about DynamoDB. It's not the topic of this presentation, so just think of it as a key value database, maybe something like Cassandra, because it's also not a SQL database, and we'll just use it to, to store our users in this scenario. Uh, so we are going to deploy this uh, DynamoDB table, deploy two functions, one will be to add users and the second one to fetch users, uh, deploy API, and after that I'm going to just test it and, and show you how it works. So let's go, just I need a moment to close the presentation. Okay. Yeah, so I have here uh, this project which is already created. Just let me make it a little bit bigger. So here in, in this directory, I have two functions, which is called add, uh, one, first is, is called add user, the second one is called get user. First one is uh, created in uh, Python. And in this function, we have our Lambda handler, which is, as I said, just the first function which will execute. And this, uh, this function just uh, moves to another one, which effectively uh, puts items and writes this, uh, this user to DynamoDB table. We have also the, the second function called mm, getUser, and as you probably uh, no, it will just fetch the users from DynamoDB table, and this is uh, mm, the same as in first one. So we have Lambda Handler, the first function which will execute, and also get user, which will just get user. We are also checking in this if statement if the, the um, record exists. Uh, but what is uh, the most important thing is this uh, template.yaml file in which we are uh, defining the resources which are going to be created. So starting from the beginning, we have a global section which consists of uh, some common variables to, to our functions. The first thing is uh, execution time, so we are setting the timeout for the fun for function to three seconds. We uh, have to say what environment we would like, to, uh, sorry, what runtime we would like to use, and this is Python. Then we are passing two environment variables to the function, which is uh, DynamoDB table name, and also key column name. We have to provide the name of, of this column. Then we are defining the resources. And the first thing is our API. This small, uh, small, um, exactly four, four lines, we'll uh, deploy, we'll create our API in API Gateway with just uh, one environment called prod, as we are deploying everything to production now. 
then we, uh, we, cre we are creating the uh, get user function, uh, which depends on uh, our um, DynamoDB table, because uh, as I said, it is required to run this application. We just have to provide where is our code, what should execute, some other information about the um, uh, policy. So this is uh, the access we are providing with, with this line, access to our DynamoDB table. And then uh, our events, actually only one event, so this function will execute uh, on get request to this path. Then there is a second function. function um, the same uh, definition, only the, the name is changed, so I will scroll down to the DynamoDB table and just quickly uh, discuss it. It is only the, the table name here. We have to provide the name of the primary key. There is also server-side encryption uh, enabled. And the, the last section is output. So that's the, um, in the output, we'll receive the URL to our API to execute our API. Okay, so to start uh, everything, I just have to run some command, and this is some build. Um, this command uh, checks, actually in this scenario, checks if everything is okay, if, uh, uh, if the template is, is correct, so it is uh, quite convenient to, to run it before uh, everything. And uh, now we have to package our application. And just to keep it very fast, I will copy the uh, command from here as it is prepared. OK, so the, the next command is package, which actually sends our uh, template and our uh, code to S3, to, to the storage in AWS, and creates also, oh, sorry, I need to change my Okay, Let's, this is demo effect. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so we created, uh, thanks to this command, just another template which, uh, which is transformation of the first one, but we don't have to know anything about it. It was created automatically. So the next thing is uh, deploying our application. And to do so, I will use command sum deploy. Then we are specifying the, the path to this uh, new template called package.yaml, which was created in previous, uh, previous step. Uh, we also providing some name for, uh, for our resources, which will be created. And this is uh, only a name, Idemia Expo Sum Demo. And as we are going to create some permissions, we have to provide these uh, capabilities um, to be able to do so. So now I'm going to, to, to run it. And let's now just jump to from to IWS console. And uh, what's going under the hood? Uh, Sam is using something called CloudFormation. And this is just a service which helps you to create your resources, uh, a group of resources, as in this example. And here we see our stack that it's, it's uh, going to be created. For example, I can check uh, events, and here we see that our user table is uh, creating right now. So if I wait a moment, it should be, yeah, it is created. So I can go to resources and then jump to DynamoDB table. Yeah, so we see our table, which was uh, created a moment ago. We just see that there are no items here, and there is a primary key called ID here. So we need to wait a moment for our function. Yeah, it is created. So what, what happened is that our um, first of our function, this is add user, was, was created. And here in AWS console, we just see that um, there is our code in this place. Uh, we can also see that our function will run as a response to API gateway uh, request, and this function has access to DynamoDB table. So this is just pretty uh, simple information here. Okay, so let's check what else is created. So there is also a second. Uh, second function created, and we have our API, so let's quickly check it. 
case, so we have uh, our API gateway here, and there, there is uh, the, the path user under which are two, two methods. The first one is uh, get, and the second one is post, and both of these methods are proxied to our Lambda function. So from here, from our stage prod, because we deployed the stage called prod, I can copy this URL, which will be uh, needed in a moment. We can also check here that everything is successfully created. And just to show you that it's working fine, I'm going to send the request. Okay, so let's just try to add a user. Um, we have to specify this, uh, this field ID because it's our primary key which is always needed in DynamoDB table and everything else uh, can be what we would like to add as uh, this is user RP so I will add a user with uh, name and surname uh, only. Oh, this doesn't work yeah, because I copied the wrong thing. One moment. should be better. Yeah, so it is 200, so successful. We can uh, invoke the second uh, second function with a get request uh, for user with ID1. Yeah, and it also worked. We received the same user. I can add another one, uh, just providing uh, the ID, and this time I will add also Street called say yeah, and maybe city. Okay. So the user was added, and we can see what we received. So we received this second user. What is great uh, about DynamoDB uh, in this case, uh, so here is our AWS console. I can now refresh this table and we see that there are two users. The first one has only a name and surname and the second one uh, has also city and street. So it, it works without any changes. The only thing we needed was uh, ID in this case. Okay, there is also one, one more thing which I would like to show you about SAML, and this is the uh, very good access to logs. Using uh, the simple, sorry, simple command, we can access uh, logs from our function uh, directly in our console just by, by running uh, this command. We have access to get function uh, logs, so if I execute it, uh, we will see uh, in a moment requests going here, which is really helpful in terms of uh, checking if everything is working uh, and if everything is, is fine with our function. Okay, so just as the as, uh, last step, I will destroy uh, our resources, sorry, using the, the also the command with CloudFormation, this destroys everything in, in our stack. We can check it also here in AWS console. In CloudFormation, we see that deletion is in, in progress and it will just remove everything which was created. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. All right, so let's summarize uh, everything. Serverless is great, uh, I think, at least. During today's presentation, I just touched possibilities of AWS and especially of Lambda. Uh, however, we were able to deploy our first fully serverless API, and as you probably saw, it was uh, very easy to start just writing to function, just writing the template. Of course, you uh, need to have your AWS uh, account, and it was very easy to deploy these functions, to deploy API, and to achieve our target very, very quickly. Don't forget about disadvantages. Please 
check if Lambda is suitable in your use case, because as I said, it's not always a great, uh, the best uh, solution to, to our um, application. So I hope you like serverless concept. Now, now I would like you to start thinking about it. Please try using Lambda, check, check it yourself. You can open your free IWS account, which has a lot of free features for the first year of, of using it. Check whether Lambda or containers are, are better for you, which better suits you. If you have any questions, please find me uh, after this presentation or in office, or if you have any questions, please ask them in, in a moment. And thank you, and enjoy the expo.